morning and welcome to the program Perspectives. Perspectives this morning on Invicta is a program sponsored by the Kutuna State Ministry of Health. And it is to talk about COVID-19, what we have, the situation in Kutuna State. And we'll be looking at uh, Nigeria and the world over. But it is important that we talk about the situation in Kaduna State. Um, what is happening, well, you know, how compliance level, and of course, uh, what we must do to keep ourselves safe from um, the coronavirus. And to share with us this morning about what is happening in the state and the world over, I have Dr. Ezina Arugu with me in the studios. He is a medical officer with Barodiko Teaching Hospital here. In Kaduna, Dr. Ezena Arogu, good to have you again in us. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Um, the world today, as we see, uh, talking about a new wave, uh, and that's it's hitting hard, especially on uh, other countries of the world: USA, Germany, France, Spain. Uh, you know, all experiencing um, a, a new wave, um, and that's very disturbing, as you know, to, to the world. Again, we do know that. Um, a vaccine uh, vaccines have been discovered and the uh, efficacy of it is going to over 90 percent and we're saying um good news for the world on coronavirus but with the new wave and uh it's turning out that we're getting a lockdown too with with, with what's, what's happening and uh, the fears of all of these to africa to nigeria where are we here okay well thank you very much yeah, um, coronavirus, the first wave, the lockdowns, and the stability, so to say, and now um, seeming second wave in some climbs. If you, if you all remember, even at, at the first instance, even as um, the lockdown was being eased, there was this, um, I don't say prediction or forecast, but there was the, the warning the suspicion of possibility of um, a second wave and even a third wave as we would experience from other pandemics in the past and what are those factors that fuel those second subsequent waves people following the um, the relapse of the first case the first wave people get to relax let down their their guards and then of course while the transmission continues if you remember in developed countries as globally in, in, in fact the, the the world economy was opened up people um, activities and um, came back to life electioneering this period a lot of gatherings the social distancing was being bridged people became too complacent with it. People seem to get used to it. So people let down their guards. And incidentally, that most likely would have failed the resurgence of the second wave um, globally. Now, of course, no, no doubt that um, there's still an eye looking out for, for, for mutation, if there are some mutant strains that are, are infecting people. Then coming down to our climbs, it seems we're not having the 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 second wave yet it seems i said um why do i say seems um ab initio uh, we have our peculiar challenges take for instance in the country testing even have we hit our targets the the whole of nigeria have not tested up to one million meanwhile countries like the us had in the past were tested up to a hundred thousand per day so within 10 days they would have done what we have we've done in our country so you can see that um, for obvious reasons um we, 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 testing is still poor in our countries but even at that even at the testing rate people's attitude people are getting tired people are just tired you know people have either gotten used to it or we just want to <laughs> live on with the normal life so the testing again is one factor but even at that the the percentage the rate um, of people tested, the prevalence amongst those tested has also seemed to drop. So while we might have, yes, genuinely have some reduction in our um, incidence in, in our countries, in our country, um, but there's also the issue of the, the testing. But by and large, across all boards where testings are being done and, and um, optimally or near optimally, the cases of COVID-19 in Africa and Nigeria particularly has seemed to, of course, the rate has seemed to reduce and um, we hope 
it continues reducing. But again, our testing attitude is still poor. You talked about attitude, and I, and I want to take you know take you from take it off from there. Um, the attitude where we've let off our guards and um, where we've re gone back to you know relaxed, so to say. Is it this belief that um, with us, uh, COVID-19 may not be as real as, you know, what is happening or that uh, uh, so many factors have come to play? Why? Because, of course, we know about the unemployment rate. We know the economy is biting so hard. And we know that um, here's a country that um, you know, we must just go out to earn a living. And so attitude and why we we relaxed and, you know, let all down our guards. Um, what, where, where can you place that? Where, what can you say on that? Okay, yeah. Um, the, the problem of managing pandemics and other outbreaks, and in fact, the general situation of life is a systematic thing. Okay? If we look at the, the system in developing countries, Nigeria is an example, as compared to developed countries, the system the countries run, the individuals run, the government run, is they are, in fact, very very far apart okay so because those institutions are strengthened things naturally align and work better to to as compared to um, developing countries where the system um, is still being a um, serious work in progress now because you know of course the relaxation of lockdown and all that has happened is not because corona has been defeated or corona has gone but people need to even be alive Okay, so people need to get back to, to their, yeah, to simply to be alive. People need to progress, schools need to open, people's businesses need to restart, people need to pick up their lives again. And we have to weigh the risk and the, and the benefits, and that's why eventually we'll have to start opening up. But in opening up, the protocols have not, the protocols have been adjusted, but have not been abolished in the, I mean, the, the prevention, infection prevention control, especially the non-pharmaceutical um, prevention protocols, face masking, social distancing, hand hygiene, cough etiquettes, and all that. Those things are still in place. But how are people, how responsible have individuals been in adhering to these protocols? You and I will know that, um, number one, people usually are on default trying to be against the the norms or the rules and then the the impact and effect of coronavirus like i said earlier on people have become burnt out people are tired people are people just so it's it's across board nobody exempted from government if you look at government officials in government meetings to even health workers to a, a whole across board across board worship centers people are throwing away the the the, the rules and protocols but the unfortunate thing, while we are letting God, letting low our, our guards, the coronavirus is not letting low its guards. It's still there. It's still virulent. It's still deadly, especially amongst those um, with other comorbidities, as in other infections and um, risk factors. So it's still there, and it's still killing people. But albeit, we know that, yes, there's been, with the little adherence to protocol, let me say little that has been done, we could see that, and again, for probably other factors related to the virus, probably, we could see that there's been a decline, a significant decline, yeah, across border the rate. But, like I said, people have let down guards and coronavirus is still there. If we're able to optimize our testing, we might, just might, pick um, a lot of cases that we've not picked. Praying and hoping that um, we don't have a, a repeat a surge again, especially now we're going into the Hamilton and season. Well, coming back home uh, to Kaduna State, the situation in Kaduna State, um, can we, you know, look into that? Oh, well, situation in Kaduna State, I, I must primarily um, commend Kaduna State's um, government and Kaduna State's um, response team on, on coronavirus. Why well, am I commenting that if you look at Kaduna State versus other states, there are some states... <laughs> we all know that have practically stopped stopped testing or have even had it difficult even the few cases that ncdc had said were from those states those states are still fighting saying no we don't have such and it doesn't really make sense from the 
from from the scientific angle. But if you look at Kaduna State, there's been a consistency in, in testing. The target for each state is to test at least one percent of its population. Okay, you may not have the the figures of of that completely, but um, we are all a lot of states are far from there. A lot of states are sleeping on it. Of course, funds were provided to all states to enhance um, such testings. But in Kaduna State, there's been a lot of um, activities to improve on testing. A lot of activities, the testings are now moved down to the local government areas. More tests, more, more sample collection sites are provided. Okay, Consumables and um, kits are being provided to even to local government areas. So people don't need to come to the central to the metropolis for for testing um, to be done. So in Kaduna State, as at um, as at last yesterday, confirmed cases total is just less than three thousand, about two thousand nine hundred forty-five. Um, number of cases on management one hundred seventy-three, and then um, number of cases that have been discharged about two thousand seven hundred twenty-five, while um, number of deaths have been at. Um, 47. And even at this, Kaduna State is still, if you see the data every day, the statistics, you notice that Kaduna has been testing relatively um, better than a lot of states. A lot of activities are on. But again, like I said, it's it's far from what we used to have in the past. Okay? Um, intensified case findings. Um, uh, how are we doing that? How are people, individuals, volunteering to come and test? People who have symptoms and rather stay at home as compared to at the initial time that people want to volunteer themselves to go and test. People come back from trips and have symptoms. Their neighbors, family members, have initial would have either made sure they got tested, but now everybody is so, so relaxed about it. So th those, are the, those are the issues. People are not, if you go to <laughs> events, you see a lot of events, a lot of weddings, you know, with the lockdown, Every, everybody held held on to their weddings and now with the opening of town now right. weddings are back burials are back if you pass through any of these events you wonder if we just had COVID-19 in this 2020 so by and large Cardinal State uh, I, I, as I would say yes is still doing better compared to other states but of course we've not reached where uh, we aim and hope to reach would it be part of our civic responsibility as citizens uh, the, you know around us in the neighborhood to probably report cases of um, that we suspect that uh, this you know attention of um, uh, of the covid team has to be drawn to to that yes i, I would say yes you know it, it has not changed mm. from when it was <coughs> please look out if your neighbor comes back from a, uh, a, an area you know that um, high risk areas, when well, we had China and some few states in the country, but now that we've had it all over the place, of course that line, the protocol um, was seems to just naturally walk away. But you see somebody who has had symptoms, who is sick, even if it's not coronavirus, the person should be encouraged to get to the hospital to get evaluated. Some people stay at home and eventually die. More so, if it is now coronavirus, and that person does not get to the to, to be tested and of course managed appropriately. What's the fear? What's the risk? The prevention of continuous spread is lost. So when we don't take it as a responsibility, our own responsibility to watch out, help government in court in that aspect, thereby helping ourselves and our community, if we don't do that, we are only encouraging the breed, the spread of the pandemic. We are not helping intercept the, the cycle. Once, once you're able to, number one, talk to the person, and if need be, of course, you have, they've always shared um, contacts and who to call and raise alarm. And if, if it doesn't happen, and that person is able to spread the virus, the person might survive from his or her own um, primary infection as an index person. But whoever gets it, the contact that contracts um, coronavirus from, from that person, you, you might not even know you have some other um, underlying health issues, and then you'll be worse hit as compared to that. So it's, yes, responsibility of, number one, everybody as an individual to have a positive health-seeking attitude, especially now, especially in regards to coronavirus, not overlooking other um, epidemics, outbreaks of diseases. We've had yellow fever, now again, Lassa fever might still be around. So for the further looking out for the good health of one and all, okay, it's our responsibility to try to be healthy enough to ourselves 
to our family, loved ones, and then to the community at large. Well, again, uh, bringing our, our, our cultures, our beliefs into all of these, uh, it was uh, COVID-19 was a threat to all of the things you know that, that we we hold so dear to heart. I'm talking about um, burying our deads and, of course, um, you know, marriages and all of that. And and we we we're loud about all of these things when we, when we get you know involved with them. But again, uh, now now that we see all of that coming back, um, you know, and could I put this on attitude again that people just believe that uh, in places of worship we believe that you know God is above you know coronavirus and of course um, the dead you know that that's the final thing we can do for them to you know lay them to rest and all of that the clash that we're seeing here and um, how to guard ourselves against this. Yeah, that, that's that's a really um, valid um, point. I, I use myself as an example. Recently, I lost an aunt, and we had to go for the burial. Mm. And I was on my face mask, and the at the graveside where they were digging the grave, and somebody says, <laughs> "Let me just say the way he said it." Oh boy, you still wear face mask. No, come die here. We we'll never bury the one we want bury now. Okay. So you could see that mm. people mm. have looked at it. And in fact, you see yourself like a stranger. Mm okay so the pressure is there then at a point even in group large group um, pictures somebody is insisting that if you don't have your face marks if cameraman will not take the picture mm. so you can see there's a clash yes people again because of initial some people just for reasons best known to them have decided to see it as calm okay that is one because i want to believe everybody for even those that think is a lie had information had information about coronavirus disease so that is one then two again because of the the uh, would i say the good part of the disease people that a lot of majority of people that get infected would recover on their own without any symptoms or mild symptoms so they are not like oh last last we are all good we move okay so that again has encouraged it's good that it reduced the the fear, stigma, and discrimination. But again, it's also the, the balancing effect. It's also led to some gross disregard to protocols and all that. So that has fueled the attitude of people in social activities and regards to abiding to to protocols. So yes, we have to, we had to open up. The country had to open up again. People had to start doing activities. Protocols are still there. If you must stay in in enclosed area, certain numbers are supposed to. Certain sitting arrangements, social distancing. What is the ventilation of the place? All these things help reduce the risk of transmission. It's still there. Those protocols are still there. But again, people responsibility being responsible is still the bane of our problem in obeying and adhering to protocols. Well, again, on protocols. Protocols have been put in place. You must observe those protocols. But again, can we say, are we can we talking about a situation where we're doing selective um, protocols to take? Uh, I mean, face masking may not be the in thing. May, may not be as you know would want them. So is it just right or wrong to to take one and, and leave the other? You know, convenience things maybe to to, to us. Okay. Yeah. There, there is this popular. Um, illustration or question that they usually use if, if you if you if you drive a car mm. speeding now whether speeding on yourself or not you are of course prone to accidents now do brakes help you to reduce speeding do seat belts help protect your life when you have accidents yes so are we now going to choose okay since i'm going to use the brake let me stop using the seat belt or well, since I'm going to use the seatbelt, let me uh, rather not use the, the brakes, okay? So these things, they all have their a little contribution from here, a little contribution from there, okay? Ultimately, if the, the, the way the virus spreads from one person to the other, the most probable way, it's, it's usually through the respiratory system, okay? It comes in droplets. Um, and now, so droplets emanating from... A, 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 a um, sorry, not HIV, a COVID 19 positive person, even at sneezing, could travel as far as about two meters 
before it gets down to the ground based on um, gravity. So that distance itself is an added advantage. Of course, if you are staying in your house and somebody is staying in his house and this one has COVID, of course, there is no connection. So the distance there, the physical distance now comes into play. So that even if you are getting to mingle with people, it has to be that um, distance, okay? And now for the fact that, yes, even if that happens or you're a little closer than that, or for any reason that um, droplet travels a little faster than that, the, the, the use of face masks prevents the virus getting through the portal of entry, the respiratory system again to a otherwise negative person through the nose or through the mouth and sometimes well through the eyes. So the use of face mask and use of social um, physical distancing as the case may be is key. And then the hand hygiene because you don't know what you've touched and people usually touch their faces. So you might not know at what point which of these protocols is going to help protect you against the contracting the virus. So that's why it's encouraged that people of course use all okay but in the instance where social distancing is not um, effective the added advantage with the use of face mask is also key okay so i'll not tell you choose one and leave the other but again at the scenario as the cases are all all used together would actually enhance the prevention of um, transmission or contraction of covid 19. the program is perspectives and it's coming to you on invicta 98.9 this program is sponsored by kaduna state ministry of health and uh, let's to look and talk on COVID-19, the situation that we have in the state, Nigeria, and the world over. And of course, um, sharing thoughts with us on that this morning, Dr. Ezina Arogu is with us in the studios, a medical officer with Barrow Diku Teaching Hospital. We'll come back after this commercial break. Welcome back. Here's the program, Perspectives, this morning, and um, we are with... Um, Dr. Ezina Rogu, medical officer with Baraudiku Teaching Hospital, and talking about um, COVID-19 or coronavirus situation we have in the state, the nation at large, and of course, talking about it world over. Uh, doctor, coming back again home, Kaduna State, um, you know, the spikes that we have, uh, you know, we have 23 local governments in the state, and um, have some areas, areas um, that uh, we, we're getting the bulge now, or you know, we just are managing it as it should be. Um, well, like, like we've said, you know, the, the local government areas, you have to look at various factors, popping facilities per se, um, sample collection, like I, I've said, is being disseminated to the to, to local government areas. People have been trained so that they could at least take um, specimen where samples are test are taken and then brought back to central areas that have the testing labs like in Kaduna and Zaria where the proper testings are, are done. So the ease of assessing such facilities is one, okay? The, of course, if you look at it again, the attitude of um, individuals in some various um, local governments vary based on some, some people predominantly are farmers, go more to farm. Their routine activities keep them usually far away into the bush and all that. So the ability to come and even have their samples taken, okay, as compared to other urban areas, Kaduna, uh, Central, Kaduna, North, um, Chukun, and all these areas around there. Of course, when you see the spikes going up in those areas, it actually goes back to look at what amount of testings have we done. Number two, when, when you have, um, like now, the, the way the testing has actually adapted itself, so to say, the intensified case findings. Okay, if you have one person who is positive, um, the idea is look at who are his contacts, who are his immediate contacts, and the more you check amongst those people, the higher the chance of having positive cases as compared to maybe when 10 people come to test in far away, maybe local governments are very far and nobody is found positive you know you're not looking at index cases and looking for contact tracing so looking at um, 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 local governments or environments like Kaduna North and then Kaduna South and Chiku where people who are found positive you can easily find their contacts either their immediate families whom they've been together with or who they've come in contact with within the recent period so that has um, actually um, accounted to the ability of finding more positive cases. But just like in from beginning of COVID-19, the area that have more traffic, the area that have 
people traveling more from other places into the more people that people that traveling to Kaduna Metropolis cannot be even on passing through will not be compared as to people that travel to other um, local government areas. So these factors and others actually fuel the spike in um, from selected local government areas, as we've seen. And, and again, um, talking about um, you know uh, those victims or those uh, that are tested uh, that have tested positive, we hear you know at the onset that it was for free treatment, and of course, um, do we still have all of that on ground? Yes. Mm. For now, um, treatment for coronavirus is still free. Mm. Government is still. Uh, what I mean, free. The patient doesn't pay anything. Yes. Not that government doesn't spend mm. money. Government spends money to treat. Uh, it's still free. It's still free. Okay. The protocols for um, payment for testing lies on those that come into the country. It's beyond just Kaduna State. People that come from outside the country who did their test and then come in have um, compulsory testing after seven seven days. So they pay for that. But for Kaduna State, um, testing is still free. Testing is still free. And then, um, of course, treatment. Treatment is free. Okay. And we have not had cases of um, probably overwhelmed with, um, you know, uh, facilities have not yet been overwhelmed with um, those reporting or those that have been treated now. No. Currently, you can see with the decline, mm. if you look at people in active treatment, about 173 or so, and um, what, what I mean, those, act those that we know currently, yes, have not tested, after testing positive, have not tested negative afterwards. Now, it's not all that are managed in the isolation centers. People are categorized, if you're qualified to be isolated from, or managed in isolation centers, of course, you are taken to such centers depending on the state of your, of your ill health. Like I said, some might have no symptoms at all. They've just been found to be positive, but they are not having any symptoms of the disease. So those ones, the way you manage them, different from somebody who is having as much as difficulty in breathing. So those that have symptoms are managed appropriately according to their symptoms in either in the centers, isolation centers. Those that have mild or no symptoms will be managed at home with certain protocols. Again, of course, you are isolated in, in, at home and then so that you don't spread to others and then you have been managed from there. So there is no the overwhelming now we have 173 as compared to the past we will have even more than that. So for now Health workers are not overstretched in management of COVID-19, singularly because we, our number of active cases are not as much as compared to um, initial times. And again, because we are not experiencing any second wave again currently, okay? But if we get there and we have more people who are getting positive and having symptoms, of course, the cycle will repeat itself. Well, uh, other parts of, you know, other clients are talking about... Uh lockdown and of course we see con other co clients too now i'm talking about palliatives and uh you know uh, on how to cushion the effects on, on on their citizens for nigeria and back home we do not pray for that you know to really happen because we saw what happened with the palliatives and uh, distribution in, in the country and of course in, in states too we cannot afford to go for a lockdown doctor um again even the first lockdown, not that we comfortably afforded to go for a lockdown, it was it was a necessity. Okay, we pray and hope we don't get to that state. Okay, if we get there, the alternative will be to lock down again. You have to cut the spread. You have to intercept the cycle of transmission. But like what we've seen, even the other clients are they're not finding it funny going back on lockdowns. They also have their challenges. They have challenges with testing and um, treatment also. But because their cases have spiked a second wave has come up that's why they're having their uh, various lockdowns for nigeria we pray it doesn't get to that extent and we hope it doesn't and again of course the the good news about vaccines coming around we pray and hope um they become approved as quickly as possible so that we could um intercept such so for now yes we, lockdown is still on the table nobody has ruled it out of the table but um, it's not tending the graph is not tending towards lockdown again for now okay uh, we just talked about it for for, for the vaccine now uh, you know uh, the pfizer moderna and of course all other you know giant pharmaceuticals uh you know coming up with and all to you know um to get rid of um covid 19 or to for treatment of covid 19. again distribution is becoming a problem uh they are talking about distribution now 
again for Africa, for Nigeria, and all of this trickling down, yeah, would we have uh, a situation on our hands with that? Well, for, for now, yes, a lot of good news. Some have shown um, to be about 19 and 5 percent um, efficacious. Um, but it's not the none has had the green light go to the market okay they're still studying all that to you know but if if eventually it's approved of course it's a pandemic the who uh, unicef and all the other world health bodies will look at modalities on how to get it across they will look at criteria well, for now we don't know how it's going to be but of course for humanity's sake they will try to make it go around so of those vaccines like that of well maybe Pfizer and some you know storage fast a lot of issues concerning them some storage facilities have to start about minus 70 degrees Celsius okay so where can we really do that okay and then others might be minus 30 others within the the range that we could actually manage in our fridge and freezers in the country looking at power supply so a lot of factors are related to um, vaccine processing even up to vaccination the federal government has its tax force on ground already looking at that now trickling down is not just for them to produce and then send to all other even in countries would they be able to get the license to reproduce okay so that they could also it makes it cheaper also okay so all those things will be looked at how to even acquire buy some get deployed and how to distribute the government is already thinking in that way on how to work out those modalities should it um should we have vaccines available and also pharmacovigilance the studying of the effect of the vaccines when you start giving it how does it affect people okay so the government has a, a a team on ground already trying to look at how to manage such such things but for now is um we're hoping there's been a lot of it, it was actually quite fast and we hope that soon sooner than than later we'll have the vaccination is actually to prevent if you get um, vaccinated to prevent i will ask on that what that now that uh, we are you know about to get the vaccine for it would it just just be the end of covid 19 or it will be it will be full with us and then we'll know that uh, we can get medicine for treatment okay uh, well it, it's a good um development if we get vaccine a lot of um, vaccine preventable diseases abound mm. okay even the other people are having the outbreak mm. You've been vaccinated against the tuberculosis, um, measles, and other. But you still see people having those mm. diseases for various reasons: either non-compliance with the immunization schedules, or simple failure of the immunization to take, and all that. So we may also have those things. But for now, what the vaccine is supposed to do, as the name has said, as vaccine, is to prevent. It's not cure. Mm. Somebody who already has COVID-19 at the given time has no benefit to the vaccination, okay? Um, so it's actually to prevent. And so if we're able to prevent people from getting the infection, you see, we've stopped the spread of the disease. That's Let's say it right, doctor. Um, the vaccine is to prevent. At the point of uh, one coming down with uh, COVID-19, uh, there can be a treatment for it? No, 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 no. Vaccine is prevention. Yeah, it's okay. not. It's not treatment. So where are we? <laughs> Here. Here. Now I'm talking about a situation where the vaccine is just for prevention. Yes. And we're talking about people that may come down with uh, COVID-19. So if we have ten people, two are infected with COVID-19, mm. those two would not benefit from the vaccine. Now the remaining eight that have not been infected or are not infected at that given time would benefit if they receive the vaccination it will prevent them from getting coronavirus i don't know if you understand yeah I'm, 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 following, I'm trying to follow that but, but because we already have some who are under treatment now and they may come out you know uh free from 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 COVID nineteen. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay, yes. So I'm looking at people okay, like those that. ones who have recovered from. Of course. Well, the the, the guidelines. Those who still have it and have reported are under you know the facilities of treatment. Okay. Let me use a simple example. Mm. If I have measles, for instance, giving me immunization against measles, 
it's of no use. use. I yeah. already have it. Mm. Okay. You continue with the treatment. Good. I'll okay. Continue treatment and it, it runs its course. Yeah. I recover from it. Okay. Then somebody who does not have it mm. is the one that benefits. It's actually for prevention. Mm. Somebody who is already infected will be managed. You know, I, I like using the word managed because for now we've said there is no cure, no definitive cure for coronavirus disease. So such persons will be managed until they recover from it. Okay, mm. but those who are not infected would benefit from the vaccination to help prevent them from getting infected with the disease. All right, uh, out there, I hope the listeners are getting us, you know, straight and right and on and, and what we're saying here. Um, the vaccine, when they do come, is for prevention. And, of course, um, for those that have come down with it, they'll still go through the management process of, you know, getting uh, treated with it. Dr. Ezina Arogu would be in the studios this morning and uh, looking at coronavirus. Uh, it's a program sponsored by the Kaduna State Ministry of Health. Let's get to hear from you. Um, what is happening in your neighborhood, around you, and your concerns with COVID-19 in the state? And um, how much, you know, uh, of government's attention you still want to draw to it? And of course, um, even uh, on health uh, facilities that we have. And numbers to call to be part of this program 081 40989 or 070 Let's get to hear you about um, yeah what your concerns are on coronavirus. Just before the calls, yeah, Doctor, uh, in the United States of America, you know, they are on a big... Uh, uh, you know, uh, event now, which is the Thanksgiving, and of course, uh, Christmas too will be around the corner. Back home, yeah, you know, Christmas, you know, just staring us in the face too, and uh, a lot of gathering and a lot of you know visiting and all of that will be going on again. You know, as we get ready for this big event, you know, what are the things again that we must, you know, um, okay. be looking at? Yeah, just like you said earlier, the, the protocols are still there. Mm. Okay, in fact, even for traveling, the advice has still been: if you don't have, if you shouldn't engage in non-essential travels. Okay, but God's grace, if we all survive by subsequent years, we'll have a lot of Christmas, a lot of celebrations to attend to. But for now, that we still have COVID, we're not sure. Let's try and be a little responsible in the respect of protocols with regards to the prevention. Hello? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I think I'm calling you. Sorry, can you come with Zamani. your name? Okay. Zamani. 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 Okay, Zamani. Okay, let's hear you, Zamani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, this question to the doctor, please. Can we say this that as we decide Coronavirus for us. Thank you very much. Sorry, I don't, uh, uh, don't go, don't go, Zamani. Uh, let's get you again, please, on, on your question. Okay. If you see this vaccine, the, the vaccine that is, that is coming up, do it. That will finally school with 19 to us. Oh, okay. oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we got you on that. Uh, when the vaccine coming up is, uh, are we <laughs> late to rest uh, coronavirus? I, I guess you we talked about that, that no, not, not over yet, but doctor, you may just want to. Yeah, thank you for your question. Um, if, if we look back, we've had of, we have and have had a lot of vaccine preventable diseases. It does not put it to rest because everybody might not get the vaccine. Some people just opt out of being um, immunized, okay? So it prevents people from getting the um the virus however if we're able to have complete coverage where everybody is vaccinated against it naturally it would um, would have um road wiped off from um, coronavirus just like some other smallpox and other infectious diseases in the past Hello, good morning sir good morning and good morning to the doctor good morning uh, my name is Comrade Gabriel from uh, Mahuta here sir all right Comrade Gabriel uh, I think with what the doctor is explaining now it seems that uh, some states do not even want to follow, like when you say that uh, maybe some states do not even write 1% target. My worry here is that, uh, that uh, recently 
there was a there was a strike by this mob and the uh, kind of this collective, which was not distributed. And even today in the newspaper they say while there was a lockdown, about six almost almost six billion was spent on school feeding. The unfortunate thing is that uh, why is it that uh, when somebody is starting with a police sir, he doesn't want to carry on because just as the doctor and every uh, and data and everybody are spending, we not all listening from this one and take precaution. But it seems the people starting with this responsibility they are not sincere at all because how can they uh, which amount of money they cannot be able to go around? And even recently the state government here was saying that they spend about four hundred thousand to manage a patient. So let them be sincere so that we can be able to contain this. Not whether on face mark or hands and that let the people who are handling let them be sincere. Any cash given to them, let them spend it very well so that uh, we'll be able to know that they are doing their job. My area here, for example, sir, the school that we are going at Mahuta here, in fact, before you even enter the school, you have to wash your hands and then you have your face mask. All the students there, they have it. So what we are saying is that while the people are trying their best, the people starting with the vulnerability, they should also make sure that funds given to them are properly managed. That's my own concern, sir. Okay, Governor Gabriel, we got you on that. All right, Doctor. Yeah, thank you on, on that comment, Gabriel. Yeah, it's, it's what everybody is saying. Those that have been given responsibilities to stand up and um, own up to their responsibilities. We're not the ones executing those responsibilities so they, they would um, be in the best position for those states to talk about their modalities of managing funds that were given to um, curb either to provide as palliative or to treat patients. And um, for, for instance, you mentioned Cardinal State spending some amount of money. Um, you, of course, they, they look at, they, they have their, the checklist on what and what has been done to manage um, coronavirus patients. The, the cost of managing one patient might vary from the cost of managing the second patient. Some patients might be on oxygen therapy for weeks. That might even be more than the 400,000 um, naira you, you, um, you, you're talking about. But again, I may not be able to give you the full details on the various stages and what it entails to manage a patient from testing, testing the contacts, admitting, and managing the people that, the, 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 the protective, personal protective equipment that are used to attend to the patients. It's a whole lot of things that are putting together to manage one patient that has coronavirus disease. So uh, you, the, the government has a better um, standing on details on how these patients are managed. But know that to manage one person might be even more than than what you are thinking. While of course to manage others might not even take half of that. So it varies from one person to the other. Yeah, let, let's come back to you now, doctor. And I'm talking about um, you know our frontline workers and uh, health you know personnel on COVID-19. What's the situation now? I'm asking this because when it first came, uh, when it first broke, uh, we saw some health workers, you know, that had to, you know, um, were taken out on, on coronavirus. Uh, our health workers, frontline workers, are they, you know, um, have we stabilized on, uh, you know, inf getting infected and all of that? Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, health workers face hazards mm -hmm. on the job mm -hmm. every day, hazards. Some eventually pay the supreme price, unfortunately. And some have morbidities, have effects of those um, hazards that may last a long time in their life. However, not that they've stabilized, so to say, but there is a better understanding of the virus. So people adapt better in its management. Okay. We have this call. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Renta. Good morning. Uh, good morning, doctor. Good morning, sir. Uh, please, I, I, name, I have this question. Your name, please. Your name, please. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Thomas, you came from Burmi. All right, Thomas, let's say. Yeah, and, and the question is that I want to know how long does this virus last on the surface? Because if you see, if you look at the whole thing that we are so exposed, mm. uh, in so many ways, for instance, like uh, somebody going to ATM, one is going out, the other one is coming in. I want to know for how long this virus lasts on the surface. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. A, a lot of um, studies uh, have been done on how long it could stay on. Is it wood? Is it cloth? Is it metal? Okay, some have said that uh, maybe some few days. All right? But the general advice, because you're not going to start checking and saying, this virus that is here, has it died? Has, is it still there? You want to know how many days it's going to stay. 
yes aside the human host it doesn't stay too long as per days okay but i'm not going to tell you some have looked at four to five days some have looked at even four to eight days on various surfaces depending on the environmental condition so but if you're talking about um atm surfaces these are places where people you are talking of minutes okay and you're using the, the buttons that is why it is encouraged that people do what hand hygiene okay hand hygiene is encouraged what do you mean by hand hygiene either washing your hands or using of um, hand sanitizers to clean your hands after touching a surface that somebody else would have touched in health facilities example they encourage frequent cleaning of surfaces with um disinfecting um agents okay so that is um what is encouraged that we should do hand hygiene even if it's not coronavirus disease there could be other pathogens that you could get um you could contract by touching surfaces commonly touched surfaces surfaces atms doorknobs cars if you get into keke those bars that people hold and all that and let's remember lassa fever is also around so people can also get them from such surfaces okay so while it doesn't last so long um it varies from one surface to the other evidence being studied okay but the idea is that you cannot predict absolutely how long it's going to last so the the message is still do your hand hygiene I ask you just one last question, Doctor. I will, my, my, my time is up, almost up the ceiling, and that's about um, you know what we see Kaduna State Government doing um, when it all started, the lockdown, and of course uh, all the protocols that have been you know we've been told to you know keep to, and we're doing all of that, and uh, then we've talked about states, neighboring states, or you know neighbors who have not done as much as um, the state government, the state government has done. And of course, we're all open now, interstate travels and uh, all of that going on. So for, for those that have not, you know, kept to all of what government of the state had done, are we not just, again, you know, <laughs> that may suffer, you know, what is not really ours. But again, um, that's that's it that we get. Yeah, that's that's the rather unfortunate thing. If you remember, Kaduna at the initial times mm. beside our index case other cases came from other states we had like 60 maybe 50 came from a particular state because they were coming from other borders that at that time probably did not do what they were supposed to do the presidential tax at the higher level is of course responsible to look at um, make sure that states um, adhere to to protocols but again you know a lot of autonomy in states but now that's why it's left why can not our state government, I must say, and other state governments also are adhering to protocols and trying to protect it. It's unfortunate that some others are not doing that. And it might just keep taking us round and round the cycle. So we, we hope and pray that they wake up to their responsibilities. Again, it comes back to being responsible for your citizens and health. We, we pray, we pray they, they all wake up to their responsibilities and do the needful. Look at foreign, you know, international, when people let down gas, when people disregarded face masks, disregarded social distancing, we saw all happened, okay? The whole world cannot just be lying against itself on just one particular thing. So, it's a wake-up call to all concerned, individuals, governments, governors, people in authorities to be responsible in their own little way. And that will go a long way helping us um, curb the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Ezenaru, thank you for coming on the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that would just be about the size of it on Perspectives this morning. Program sponsored by Kaduna State Minister of Health and he's to talk about COVID and of COVID-19 and uh, what the state government is doing and of course uh, the citizens' responsibilities too. Dr. Ezenaru, medical officer with Parao Deco Teaching Hospital being with us, telling us about uh, what we still need to do on it. And uh, I'd like to thank my colleague in the studios, uh, Maranatha, for connecting me with you. We'll come back with perspective tomorrow. Good morning.